You're listening to I Like That Story podcast number 38, The Best Face. Today's story brought to you by Evolution Consulting, nationwide image professionals for styling, speaking, and stage. I probably wouldn't have asked the question if I'd have thought about it even a little bit, if I would have considered the pain that answering it would have caused. Here's how it happened. As I've said in the past, I visit a friend of mine in prison about twice a month. At first, it was something I agreed to do, visit a kid in prison, a kid who was alone and lonely. And I've been surprised at how much I've enjoyed it over time, surprised that I consider him a friend now, a friend who... God willing, will turn his life around and do some great things in this world. At any rate, there are a few of us, people who visit others in prison, so when I saw this other guy, I assumed he belonged to a similar organization. I asked, while we were waiting to get processed through the various metal detectors and clanging steel doors, who he was there to visit. He paused only the briefest of moments before he said, My son. I challenge any actor in the world to say those two words the way he did, with all the emotions of love and pain and resignation and sorrow and frustration and humility, all in just those two one-syllable words. He was there with an older woman, his mother, the prisoner's grandmother. She wasn't using a walker, but probably should have been. She had hearing aids but still struggled to keep up with the conversation. Do you live here in town? I asked. No, we drove in from Kansas City. That's about a six-hour drive one way. Not an easy trip any time, especially not with an older person, especially when you're visiting a son in a maximum security prison. It's a reward, sort of, he said. He just got out of solitary confinement, so we thought we'd make a trip to see him. Well, how much time does he have left? Well, he said, he was supposed to be in for 18 months, but he keeps doing stupid stuff. Now it's 18 years. There's a thing I've learned about prison that's opposite about how you and I live. In life, when somebody's having a bad day, we leave them alone. When they fly off the handle, we give them some space let them cool off. In prison, it's the opposite. If someone finds out you're an edge, they lean in. If you think it's unfair, they double the unfairness. If you have trouble with authority, you will get too much authority at all the wrong times and places. And if you cross a line, you'll get extra time. And if the extra time makes you mad, you better figure out how to put a lid on it, or you will dig yourself in even deeper. So, if you know a kid who's a little impulsive, a little wild, a little angry, you can see how prison would be a bad place for them to be. So, I sat at a nearby table playing cribbage during visitation with my friend while the trio of son, father, and grandmother were visiting at a table nearby, each putting the best face on it. The son talking with animation about this new place, a lot different than the old place. The uniforms, the shoes, the way they handled money and phone calls and visits. He could have been a college kid talking about his new dorm room. The father, very interested in every detail. Oh, well, it's a lot different than the one in Omaha. The grandmother gaily and loudly playing cards, laughing, joking about the luck of the draw all of them doing the very best they could in the face of 18 more years. 18 more years, that is, if he can stop getting his buttons pushed. A chance that maybe only a quarter of his life will be wasted. A simple little bit of arithmetic done tens of thousands of times a year as parents and grandparents swallow a lump in their throat as they visit loved ones and consider what might have been. Thank you for listening. As you can tell, I believe in the power of a story. A story can change lives. It can encourage people. It can 
help them overcome obstacles and live lives of purpose, passion, peace, whatever that might look like for them. And story also changes business. It clarifies mission. It attracts good people, good customers, and offers a culture that encourages growth in many measurable and also unmeasurable ways. If you'd like to find out more about what I write or where I speak, you can find me on my website, ilikethatstory.net. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gould. God bless.